Fine, go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, young doctors. Uh, I'm Shamar Vijay Singha, and let's take a look at the exciting world of psychiatry. The outline of my presentation will be a bit about the history of psychiatry, talk a bit about modern day psychiatry and the Sri Lankan setting, qualities of a psychiatrist, how to get into the MD psych training program, and what happens in the training program, and what your options are as a psychiatrist. As you can see, the history of psychiatry was quite dark. Here you see a lady with postpartum psychosis being burnt at the stake, considered as a witch. And this grotesque instrument is being used to take out pieces of brain in a person with depression. But thankfully, things changed. On the left, you see Pinel, the father of modern day humanistic psychiatry, unchaining the lunatics in an asylum, starting a more caring way of helping the mentally ill. And in the middle, you see the father of psychology, Sigmund Freud, who in the early 1900s changed the way we look at emotional problems. And on the right, you see a poster as recent as 1950, when the first antipsychotic was introduced, clopromazine or Lagactyl, as you know. So ours is a relatively young field and has made immense strides in the recent past and forever changing dynamically. In the modern world, the WHO estimates that one in 10 persons have a mental health disorder. Depression is one of the main causes of disability worldwide and in Sri Lanka too. If you look at your own demographic young doctors, suicide is the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds. So these are the issues and the patients that we as psychiatrists are trying to help to prevent mental, emotional and behavioral problems using a biopsychosocial approach to patient care. What about psychiatry in Sri Lanka? I feel it's on par or better than most countries, even some developed countries, so-called developed countries. We have psychiatry as a final year subject, which is not there in most parts of the world. So all of you have passed psychiatry in your finals to become doctors. So your knowledge is already good. If you're going to sit for an exam, your base is already there. We have multidisciplinary teams with social workers, community psychiatric nurses, and psychologists who are under the guidance of a consultant psychiatrist, if you are to be one. There are psychiatry units available in all districts of the country. And there are university psychiatry units in all medical faculties. What skills do you need to be a psychiatrist? I think possibly the most important will be the ability to empathize, to feel somebody's pain. This is easier said, said than done. In some cases, it's easy. Let's say you get a patient who is a teacher coming with a myocardial infarction. You would be able to empathize thinking of your own teacher. She might remind you of your mother who also has diabetes and hypertension. So it is easy to be kind to this person. But when you get a patient who is having delusions and hallucinations and might be aggressive, it's hard to understand what's going on and a bit difficult to empathize. So you need to have this ability. Many of y'all are, all of y'all are extremely clever, exemplary youth. Y'all have studied hard, worked hard. So when you get somebody your own age coming with a heroin addiction, it might be easy to think, why is he doing this? Why can't he just you know, stop this? But if you go into the biology and the psychology of addictions, you will realize that it is hard for that person as well. So you need to have this ability to empathize with those in distress. You need a lot of patience. Psychiatry will take time. Won't, it's not like a quick surgery where the pain will go away, where you can take away what's causing the problem. You need to work long with the patient, with the family. You'll need good communication skills. 
in Singhala or in Tamil to speak to your patient, to understand their home situation, understand their problems, for them to feel comfortable to open up to you. And like all specialties, you'll need to pass your part one and part two. To do this, how do you get into the psychiatry training program? It starts with a screening exam. The good news is there's no prerequisite work experience. You can do your internship in medicine, surgery, gin knobs, speed, speed surgery, anything is fine. Gin knobs, we don't mind. While as a RHO or post intern also, you can work anywhere and you can take the exam. The first part of the exam is a 60 MCQ, true fault paper. That's the first part. If you pass that, get 50, you sit a structured essay paper with 10 structured essay questions. The good news about the psychiatry exam is we don't have a limit. We are at this moment short of trainees. So please join us. If you get your 50, we will pass you, all right? Anybody who gets 50 can pass. So it's up to you uh, rather than in some other specialties where there's only five taken or 10 taken where it becomes competitive. So psychiatry screening is not a competitive exam. Once, what, what is there in this exam? There are some basic sciences, neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, and you don't need the whole Cunningham or the Ganong, but certain parts related to psychiatry you will need. There'll be a bit about psychology, which is quite interesting if you're interested in understanding what happens in the human mind. There'll be a bit of medicine related to psychiatry. How do you find the resources for this exam? The PGM Prospectus, which will be online, or you can get it from the PGM, gives a good outline of the curriculum. Collect that. There is a book called Sciences Basic to Psychiatry, which has all these little areas, neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, psychopharmacology, everything. And there are trainees and some consultants also who say they have passed the part one exam only reading this book. Uh, I would read a bit more books, but it's up to you. And you can see that you get interesting books and you don't need to read large books. So for the medicine bit, you don't need a Kumayan Clark or a Davidson. The Oxford Handbook is enough because it's only certain parts of medicine that we uh, mark you on. There is a course done by the College of Psychiatrists held every year, which you can participate, which covers all the areas in the exam done by consultant psychiatrists, physicians, uh, physiologists, anatomists, and so on. Once you pass this, you're a registrar in psychiatry. Congratulations. Three years, and there are some compulsory appointments, which are mentioned on the slides. And the work and on-calls are interesting, but reasonably light compared to the other clinical specialties. You will be on-call, but you won't have much work like a gin knobs registrar or a surgical registrar. But still, the work will be uh, interesting and difficult in its own way. You're dealing with people who are emotionally distressed, but physically it's less. Once you do this, you sit the MD psychiatry, part two exam. Test MCQs and cases with patients. So if you're good at clinicals, if you all did your clinical work, good feel for you. As a senior registrar, you do one year here, Sri Lanka as a teaching hospital, and one year abroad. One good thing about psychiatry is the Western world has understood the importance of psychiatry and they have enough vacancies, so jobs, attachments are easy to find in psychiatry abroad. Once you're a consultant psychiatrist, what are your options? You can be a general adult psychiatrist, treating depression, schizophrenia, bipolar illness, addictions. You can be a child psychiatrist, treating learning disabilities, autism, ADHD, or an old age psychiatrist, which has a large overlay with medicine, treating dementia and medical complications leading to psychological illnesses, a forensic psychiatrist. You can have special interests uh, in psychiatry, like treat addictions in psychiatry. You can become a university academic, do research, teach students. All the universities have uh, a psychiatry department because psychiatry is a final year subject. My final slide, what are the benefits of selecting psychiatry? One, it's easy entry into a, relatively easy I would say, 
uh, to get into the program. It's a rewarding field if you enjoy talking to patients and families and solving their issues. You meet interesting patients, and I would say colleagues as well. There are varying myths about psychiatrists, but I like to think we're a nice group of people. So reduce physical stress and workload than other clinical specialties. The working hours are reasonable. It's lucrative. There is good private practice, if you are interested. There are good job, job opportunities. Here in universities, you don't go very far. The smallest hospitals don't have psychiatrists, so you'll be in a large hospital. If you want to go abroad, there are good opportunities. But finally, the most important thing is you will get to help the most needy, underprivileged, and marginalized group of patients and families ever. And isn't that why we all chose this noble, noble profession anyway? So think wisely about your choice. If you have any queries related to psychiatry, please contact us. And whatever your ch chosen career path, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Chamara Singh, for that uh, uh, informative and very clear presentation. You have a question. Uh, uh, one of the doctors are asking the date of the selection exam of the MD psychiatry and the closing date for applications for 2022. Yes, uh, so it's always held in June, the first week of June. And the 2022 exam, the closing date will be around uh, two months before that. So around April is the closing date. Uh, so therefore, uh, every June it's held. At the moment, it's postponed. Uh, this year's one, but it's every June. And if you have one year post in term, about two months before the exam is the closing date. And every January is the selection course, the course done by the exam. So if you join the course in January, you'll have six months of nice work leading up to the exam. There's another question. Uh, uh, one participant wants to know about the diploma in psychiatry. Yeah, the diploma in psychiatry as well has currently been stopped, but it will also be started. The PGM is about to start it again, and it's a less intense exam than the MD exam, uh, more clinical, and once you pass it, you will be released to a teaching hospital for training of one year, following which you'll be uh, posted as a MO diploma, a diploma holder in psychiatry to a, a center, depending on your merit list. Uh, that should also start this year, but for the moment, it has been stopped. Sorry, it's not clear, sir. I can't hear you. Sorry. Yes. Uh, there's another question uh, asking uh, about uh, the, whether it is essential to have uh, a class in the final MBBS to become an academic in a psychiatrist department. Uh, yes and no. If you're going to join as a probationary lecturer initially, uh, you will probably need a class. It depends on the university. Uh, the more popular universities, there's a large number of applicants at the probation lecturer level, and a lot of them have very good results. So first class, second upper distinctions are looked at. Uh, there are some universities which are less popular, which might be a bit far away, which if they are suitable for your home locality, uh, because they don't have enough people, they sometimes take people without classes, even at a probation lecturer junior level. However, if you do your psychiatry, get into the psychiatry training program, you work well as a registrar, you publish papers, everybody knows you're a very good doctor and a good person, uh, and you apply at that stage, once you're in the psychiatry program, uh, you, the class doesn't really matter. As you go senior, people look at the work you have done. What, how have you helped the development of the country? How have you worked? Uh, and then uh, you will be able to get in at a senior lecturer level, and then the university class is not looked that much. It is still looked at, but it's not essential. Okay, your uh, talk has uh, provoked a lot of, you a lot of questions are coming up, but due to time constraint, I hope you can uh, answer them on the chat. Yes, uh, sir. There are a few more questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Chamar Vijay Singh, for 
Thank you for joining sir. us and giving this uh, informative lecture.